So welcome to the little tutorial here. Question I get during rider: Can you keep up on a five hundred dollar bike with your mates on the the flash bikes? Now myself, I have flash bikes, and I have this four hundred ninety nine dollar bike I bought myself, paid my own cash. It's the Reed Osprey. So I thought no one's really done this on the YouTube before. So I thought I'll have a go. Can I keep up with my the, the, the gang on a, a cheap bike? So we have the Focus here, expensive bike, SRAM Red, lightweight rig. Uh, what can we do on the $500 bike? Will I get dropped in the first hairpin? So I chose a fast bunch. This is the Saturday morning bunch. Very quick up Norton Summit. It would be, I would say, the this, I mean, I, I remember 10 years ago going up here Saturday mornings. I would say this bunch would be the fastest hill climb bunch in Australia that's been going for over 10 years. Saturday mornings between 8.20 and 8.30 up Norton Summit. So I'm on the reed, you can see that in the top right box, I'm on the reed. It's the, uh, the alloy bike with the Shimano Sora. And see they've gone left there, we're, we're, we're motoring up here. We're motoring on this climb. Cruising up here, spinning. And you often see the riders, this is gonna be a good video. This is gonna be a good video. You can see that the bike, the main thing with the road bike is you wanna have a good fit, the bike has to fit you. You want to have the right gearing for your climbing. If you're climbing, you want to have a good ge easy gearing. And you want to have your tires pumped up. So your bike fit, proper gearing, pumped up tires. That's the main thing on a road bike. Next, you can have power meter. That's the next more, more important thing to get so you can pace yourself. So we're going, we're, we're hooking on this climb here. We're hooking on this climb. It's a new bike. It's a nice Colnago C60. I do like the paint jobs in the Colnago. People say, what do you think, Colnago? I think the paint jobs are pretty cool. The C60, they're, uh, they're, they're very, very pleasant to look at. I always like looking at the Colnagos. And uh, we're cruising up here. This, this is actually pretty fast. So I was thinking, man, I'm, I'm hurting here. And I'm like, oh, hang on. We're doing 400 watts. That's why it's hurting. So the, you see the bars there? I changed the bars. I didn't like the stock bars on the reed. I didn't like the stock bars on the reed. So I changed them to some richy, some shallow curved bars there. So I'm sitting dead last. If I go around a rider, it means the rider's popped off the back. So I'm sitting dead last the whole time, like a bit of a ticket collector, uh, the bus sweeper, whatever you want to call me, <laughs> the uh, the sponge, <laughs> the sit on sag, whatever you want to call me. I'm sitting on the back, and I'll just if a rider drops off the base, I'll just go around him and just get some footage here. So you can see wheels here. What's going on here? I've got Kim from North Adelaide Cycles. I gave him the wheels and the reed. To do a bit of attention. Not that there was a problem with the wheels, but any new bike I get, I give the wheels to Kim at North Adelaide Cycles and say, Kim, give me a Henschke tune. <laughs> Kim is a master wheel builder, probably the most experienced wheel builder, one of the most experienced wheel builders on the planet. I don't know anyone personally who's built more wheels than Kim. And just straight in the in the drops there. So the wheel does well. Wheels make a big difference. But the most important thing is being carved up, obviously, and having proper air pressure in your tyres <laughs> and the proper gearing. People see me, Harley, you spin a lot. And the reason why I do spin is I find I can put out more power because I use a power meter. After you use a power meter for a couple of years and you pay attention to it, you'll quickly learn that cadence is king or cadence is queen. So we're cruising up the hill here, almost coming up to the first hairpin. And this is, the power is still on up here you can see why riders are being popped off the back and on the front I think we have Russell and Craig setting the tempo to a breast it's still very good pace these guys lighting up again this is the I don't know of a weekly group this big that climbs hills this fast consistently Thursday night 7 p.m. at Tower Hotel there's a couple of riders yeah that's that's pretty good that's very good but it's not a group, big group it's maybe two or three guys who can really hit it but like this group here, these guys go for it. It's really good. And that's how you get better. you got to go out there with people who are better than you or whatever. They'll give you some advice, and that's how you get better. Um, a lot of people are afraid to get dropped. But if you're afraid to get dropped, you're never going to get better because you'll never ride with people who are better than you. Um, so you kick him here in the wheel jig thing, checking it out. Makes the job easier. So just lines it up. Nice objective uh, data to look at. The wheel jig. Wheel jigging me thingy. <laughs> there you go. Get it centered. And so we look at the rider directly in front. We have two riders riding two abreast here. You see the difference in cadence here. So the rider on the left, the cadence is uh, is good. 
there's a lot of debate about cadence. You know, people people say, "Oh, cadence is individual." Well, I, I disagree. I think everybody who rides good cadence over 90 will have more power. And unless you have a power meter, it's hard to really understand what I'm talking about. I was the same. I was like, "I've got to grind everywhere. I've got to grind." But when you get a power meter and you can see numbers in front of you, you know, you uh, you can really see that, and that's that makes a big difference. So we're coming to the first hairpin in Norton Summer, and this is, I'm, I'm hurting here, I can feel the, the lactate in my legs, and it's definitely, uh, you can see the riders, the strain, and if you're not, if you're not straining, you're not training. <laughs> Once a week, strain up a climb, we have Dean here on the S-Works Venge with the Envies. Dean found the pace a little bit too hot, he's about to pop off the back. People say it's like a big corn cob. <laughs> It's a big corn cob and the little kernels get popped off the cob when the, the pace gets hot. It's like popcorn, popping corn. And that, that is, this is, this is, I like this, this is good fun. This is, there's not many sports I enjoy more than climbing in a group and someone's up the front setting the pace and it's just a matter of just holding on. That It is, it's good fun. It's really good fun. And it's safe. It's very safe. Because um, if you crash, you're going this fast, nothing really much happens. You're going up a hill. We're going up a hill. These guys make it look like we're going down a hill. We're going so fast, but we're going up a hill. And this is how you get fit, man. Go riders who push you. Go people who are motivated, and you'll get fucking fit as fuck. Um, the first time I did this group was probably 2005. Well, actually, maybe, oh, man, it's, it's, it's been going for a long time. I remember going 2005, Saturday morning one time. With the lads and different people coming out. There's a Cervelo there. It's like my old Cervelo. Uh, this bike, I would say my reed is stiffer than my Cervelo. I had a Cervelo, 6.8 kilo, SRAM red, uh, probably $8,000 retail. And this $500 bike is stiffer than my $8,000 retail Cervelo. Uh, that's why I like, you know, there's nothing, you can't beat, go test ride then decide. <laughs> A lot of people make an opinion based on how they think something should be. But I base my opinion on what actually is my personal experience so kind of getting on something here so this reed bike I, I mean it's like how can i keep up on my 500 dollars bike it's fitness man it's the rider makes the bike obviously if you if you will if you have to just save seconds if you have to save seconds then yeah you need every little bit lightweight bit you can get um if you're a professional rider for sure the reed's not really going to cut it because professional races are one like that, you know? But for the everyday person, the read, the $500 read's fine. And here's the thing though, is when you buy a bike from a bike shop, you're getting, it, you're getting the bike fit. You wanna get a bike from a bike fit. You don't wanna buy a bike because of the paint job or because of the price or whatever. You wanna buy a bike shop, but you wanna buy a bike shop. You wanna buy a bike from a shop that has a good fit, you know? Yeah, that's what you're getting when you're buying it. It's like you're getting a custom suit or a pair of shoes. You're getting fitted up to the bike. So I can buy this reed. I know what my measurements are. I know what my measurements are. I can adjust the thing a millimeter here or a millimeter there. Today I was out riding. I put the seat up another two mil and it was all, all sorted. Um, I should put it down five mil and then put it up another two mil. So over time you work out what, what you need to do for your setup. But this bike here is quality. Shimano Sora. How does Shimano Sora go with Durace? It's the same thing. I mean, it's 90% it's of the same thing, in my opinion. I've got Durace. I've got a few bikes of Durace. I've got SRAM Red. I've ridden all the group sets, electronic, mechanical, whatever. It's all pretty much the same. The main difference is how it feels in your hand. It all works pretty good. It all works good enough, I should say. It all works good enough. And we're going up the climb here. And I went on the dirt roads today on the reed. Does the reed handle the dirt roads? It does indeed. It's a dirt road bike. It's an everything bike. It's 500 bucks, and it's stiffer than my old Cervelo $8,000 retail beast. How does it compare to the TCR? Uh, for me, the, T the giant TCR is a benchmark bike. It is the best performing bike on the planet with your lightweight uh, Millenstein Gen 4 wheels, the Durace mechanical group set. I can't think of anything better than that based on the studies done by German bike magazines, etc. So for me, the TCR is a benchmark, the 10 out of 10 bike. I would rate the Reed as, I rate it as a 7 out of 7. A 7 out of 10, sorry. 7 out of 10. Slipping the worst tonight. Not enough carbs. So, you, 
the difference between a five hundred dollar bike and a ten thousand dollar bike, in my opinion, is fuck all. If you're talking road bikes, if you're talking, if you're talking Shimano Sora versus Durace or Campag Super Rec or whatever, the difference is not a difference between getting dropped and winning or whatever. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not what the marketing tells you. It's fuck all. But again, if you want to buy a bike, like I ride the Giant because it's good performance, but I like the look of it, and I like, I like the wheels, the lightweight wheels, they look cool. But the read, you can still be fucking fit as fuck on a $500 bike. My only issue is with bike fit. Can you get a proper fit? And that's, people say, what's the best brand to get? The best brand to get is from the shop who can give you good service and a good bike fit. That's the best thing to get, is a bike fit. I'll say it again, bicycle fit is the most important thing. And we're cruising up here. So you see the cadence. You want to, when you're pedaling, you want to be focused on your form. You want to focus on your form. And having, having a power meter definitely helps with that. Because you can see the numbers in front of you. See the numbers in front of you. So this has been, this has been an eye-opening experience for me, riding a $500 bike, doing a 1430 up Norton Summit. How fast could a gun's bike? I reckon I could do a 13, 15 on this bike. My best time at Norton Summit is just under 13 minutes on my giant TCR. I think with this read, I could do a low 13. Uh, good conditions, good good, uh, good guys to work off or whatever. But uh, it's definitely, it's an interesting bike. Look at that, we're going past guys like the standard still. These guys are hooking. We're fucking hooking. Come and ride, people go, oh, cyclists aren't fit. It's like, <laughs> come and ride with us on Saturday morning and see how fucking fast, how long you can hang on for. I play footy, I'll be alright. Uh, it's a beautiful ride though. On the on the left here is Moriata Gorge. Sun's coming up. What a beautiful morning, Adelaide. Fucking legendary place in summertime. Actually, it's autumn. It's fall. Looks like there's another S Works Venge or Specialized Venge getting past. So I'm doing this all my five hundred dollar bike. Do you need to spend big bucks on a bike? No, you don't. No, you don't. But if you want to, then fucking do it, man. You fucking do it. There's no, you know. I'm not going to sell my bikes and just ride a $5 bike for the rest of my life. But I'm just, what I'm trying to say with this video is that it's the rider who's most important. It's the rider who's most important. So you can still get fit on a $5 road bike with Shimano Sura. Shimano Sura is all you really need. If you want better like better stuff, better what, what, what makes it better? What really makes it better? The brakes on this bike are exceptional. They're, these brakes, are, The brakes on this $500 read are better than my SRAM red brakes. The latest model SRAM Red. This is the cable brakes. These Tektro cheapies feel better, have a better power and modulation than my SRAM Red brakes. So price isn't always an indicator of quality and performance. It's, it actually it can rarely be. Passing on the rider. Um, again, we're hooking along here. Just drop off the back. So you, the main thing in cycling is you, you, you got to ride with people who are better than you you're not going to learn much riding by yourself or riding with people you can always thrash you want to go people with just can crank you man you just want to have them flog you and you see Simon here in the blue jersey I think he's going to do a PR to do it by yourself is a lot harder because you don't have that you know you don't have anyone pushing you pushing you we raised the expectation of our peer group. Simple as that. So come on, the finish line here. This is the, the Strava finish line coming up. Um, so I'm hanging on there. He's going to do a PR. That's what I mean, man. You, you're going to hang with the group, man. It's like in life. You want to hang with people who are getting the results you want. If you want to go fast up hills, <laughs> you got to hang out with people who go fast up hills. Simple as that. Simple as that. So there we go. Almost crossing the finish line there. And that's actually Craig from Bucket Belts. He makes belts out of recycled uh, bicycle tires. Bucket Belts. So I'm just peeling off. He's done. He's PR. Happy with that. And we're we'll cruising along to the pub. The pub, not to drink, but the pub is with the little meeting spot. Regroup. And that's what a lot of rides do. Good rides, anyway. If someone gets popped, there's a regroup at the top. No worries, we've got S Works tarmac there. The S Works is a pretty bike. I've got an S Works myself. They're definitely a nice, aesthetic looking bike. Um, 
So the next video I'll do a test up Corkscrew Road. I've got some power data I want to compare. I've got a time I did on my Cervelo and a time I did on my Reed. And I looked on Strava and that was the closest time to each other. So I was actually with Team Sky that day. So I was sitting on the back of Team Sky. I did a 9.49 up Corkscrew. Another day I went out with uh, some of the guys from Bicycle Express and I did about 9.45 etc. on the Reed. So it was very similar time and the power wasn't that much different. It's about 5% different. So there we go. The question's answered. Can you still keep up on a cheapo bike? I can if you can. But again, at the end of the day, you ride what you want to ride. There's no bad brands. There's no... Uh, th but there's bad bike fits. There's no such thing as a bad brand as much as a bad bike fit. <laughs> so don't focus on stiffness or grams as much as focus on cadence. Focus on gear selection, not gear brand, but actually having compact cranks, having gear you can actually spin, having a power meter, and bicycle fit. They're the things you want to focus on. And make sure your tyres are pumped up. There's no point getting out there if your tyres are flat. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments and questions down below. One more tip. The only way I got better as a rider was to get my ass kicked on climbs. The only way you're going to get better is if you train with people that can drop you. So if you're not getting dropped, if you're not getting dropped, if you can drop everyone in your group, you need to find another group. All right. If you're not getting dropped, you're training with the wrong people. To get better, you got to get dropped.